What do you think if I hear that somehow you disrespected your grandmother or your great grandmother? What do you think I will do? The court does call the case of Ashton Lee Williams, People versus Ashton Lee Williams. Kenneth Overwater, Assistant Public Defender. On behalf of Mr. Williams, I have a plea form. Is that what we're doing? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, the plea form indicates that the defendant was pleading no contest to the charge of larceny 200 to 1,000. On a successful plea to that charge, that being count two, count one is dismissed. There's also the agreement that he can't go to the location at 2543 Pittsfield Boulevard, and there's no delayed or deferred. So that's the court's full understanding of the agreement. That defense is what, Your Honor. All right, let's have him sworn. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony about the guilty, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. State your name. Astro. Sir, it is this court's understanding you're going to plead no contest to the charge of larceny 200 to 1,000. That is a misdemeanor punishable by up to one year incarceration, a $2,000 fine plus court costs. Fine could be increased at three times the value of the property, which is the subject matter of the theft. If that's greater than 2,000, that would become the maximum fine. You understand that? Yes, sir. All right. Do you understand what a no contest plea is? Yes. All right. Let me explain two things about it just to make sure. First thing it means is that you're not further desirous or wanting to contest this charge. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Second thing is, is that for purposes of sentencing, the court would treat you the same as though you had pled guilty. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. You understand also that while I'm taking your plea, I would not be your sentencing judge in this case, and you would be sentenced before Judge Perry in the 15th District Court. Do you understand that? All right. Basis for the no contest plea? Civil liability, Your Honor. All right. Understanding all of that, sir, do you still wish to plead no contest? Yes, sir. And to that charge, how do you plead? No contest. Now, you understand that by pleading no contest, you'll not have a trial of any kind? Yes, sir. Did you sign an advice of rights form? He did, Your Honor. You signed an advice of rights form, is that correct, sir? Yes, sir. Any questions regarding any of those rights? No, sir. Please look at paragraph five. You'll see a copy on the podium. Those are your rights, which are part of a trial. You understand by pleading no contest, you're giving up those rights as well as all the rights on that form. It's the same. Yes, sir. You understand you're giving up your right to appeal of right. Yes, sir. Are you on probation or parole? No, sir. Has anybody promised you anything other than what's been stated here today to get you to plead no contest? No, sir. Anybody threaten you or coerce you? No, sir. Doing this voluntarily? Yes, sir. And of your own free will? Yes, sir. All right. Court has been provided and has reviewed Ann Arbor Police Department report for their case number 247481. Any objection to the court having reviewed that report? Okay. No, Your Honor. Did have one. No, that's... Based upon a review of that report, the court does find that there's a sufficient factual basis in which the court could determine the defendant's guilt of the defense. Counsel, have I complied with the court rule? Yes, Your Honor. The court will accept the defendant's plea to count two. Wrong box. This plea of no contest to count two. Count one is dismissed. Pre-sentence investigation and report is ordered at 15th District Court probation. Sentencing in this matter will be April 8th at 1.30 before Judge Perry. April 8th, 2024, 1.30 before Judge Perry. Bond in this case will continue. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, so I got yeah. Andrew Childers appearing on behalf of the people. Assistant Public Defender Hannah Apple appearing on behalf of Mr. Webster. Approaching now. Mr. Webster, will you state your name for the record? Mr. Webster. All right. Okay, where are we? Your Honor, I did have a chance to call um, my client's grandmother, Antoinette Webster. Um, she did confirm that my client can reside with him um, or with her and that she has no issue. When I informed her what was being discussed here, she said, that's not true. He has not been any problem. Um, he's been, as far as she knew, she said, I think he's been testing, doing what he's supposed to do. Um, if anything changes, he can't stay with me. But as of right now, he is more than welcome at my house. Um, and so that's the information I have to provide to the court. Judge, we spoke. I, I um, have no reason to disbelieve the comments made by Ms. Apple right now. The information I got, I, I wouldn't call it contrary to that. We spoke with the, the, the victim in this case, the defendant's mother again, um, explained what we had been discussing and what was going on. Um, she, in so many words, says, you know, I understand that. And, and I'm, I, I don't know if it, I call it a misspeak or just mischaracterized. So it's actually the, the, the victim in this case, the defendant's mother, 
And the, my understanding is the defendant is residing, residing with his grandmother and his great grandmother. So it was actually the victim's grandmother who had called her to express concern over Mr. Webster. So I missed a grandmother in there, or a grand. So the information that you provided about the grandmother was actually the great grandmother. Who lives with the grandmother, is my understanding. Generations. Got it. Um, and a very quick version of that from mom victim is my grandmother has been complaining and is, has concerns, feels like she can't control him. All of that said, she understands the position the court's in. We're dealing with limited I don't have records. We don't have police contact. When a police reports, it is what it is. So I've expressed my concern. How we basically left it with mom was that, as I would expect the court to do, make sure Mr. Webster knows that wherever, whatever grandmother, mom, great grandmother, he's staying with, he, he follows the rules of that house. Mr. Webster is a young man has some juvenile history. I don't want things to get out of control with him. I don't want him to do things that compromise his freedom or his safety or endanger other people. Um, and I'll just leave it at that. And we have an exam date, which we've made the victim aware of, and she'll be here for that. Anything else? No, Your Honor. All right. Young man, I'm just going to tell you this. That is, you live with your, was, is your grandmother your great grandmother, right? My grandmother, yes. Okay. And your great grandmother's there too? All right. I'm going to let you know what my expectation of you is regarding them. Okay. And I will find a way to get this through to Judge Burke, who will next see you. I don't expect about anything you do. That means you have to do everything that is right by them. You understand me? If they tell you to jump, your only question is how high? If they want you to do something, you just do it. You understand me? What do you think if I hear that somehow you disrespected your grandmother or your great-grandmother, what do you think I will do? Charge me. What you do? Yeah. I will give you a place to stay. <clears throat> and I don't think you want me to do that. You've got issues right now with your mom. There's another issue. I don't know what it is with your dad. You don't have a place to go. And so if you mess this up, where are you going to go? Yep, that's exactly it. So it's up to you. <clears throat> Prosecutor's office or through your counsel tells the court that there's some problem. If I get a report of any problem, I will make sure that's where you stay. We clear? Sure. And don't don't be contacting the victim, your mother, or your sister, because you can't. You hear me? Sure. This point is bond will continue. Thank you. Court calls the case, People versus Carpa Patel. Good afternoon, Your Honor. James Mikowski, P62115, appearing on behalf of Carpa Patel, who's also appearing by Zoom. We waive in person appearance and consent to proceed remotely. Very good. Good afternoon. All right. What are we doing? I believe the court should be in receipt of the uh, memorandum of understanding from Oakland. It submitted some of that over to your staff yesterday. I believe. My long story short, I think that we have to adjourn this again. Yes. Because the biggest issue is that Miss uh, Patel had to, it has to appear by June because of the illness that was last minute. That was not planned. Pardon? 
Ms. Patel is appearing by Zoom due to my understanding is a last minute illness. illness. Okay. Um, so you're trying to transfer this to water for 50 First district court is what I believe. That requires a whole lot of signatures. <laughs> yes. To get it there. And I'm presuming I have a copy because it requires my signature. I, I assume so. Well, and I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know. I, I, this procedure is rather awkward for me because I don't know that I would actually be. I mean, I could be, but I don't know on the felony preliminary examinations whether I'm the actual assigned transferring judge. Oh, it, well, so the intention would be for Miss Patel to plead to a OWI second. Gotcha. And then after plea, the file would be transferred to 15. Sentence, to to well my understanding is it would be well i guess technically it would have to go to 15th. it has to go to 15th 15th is then the re, the judge that receives it would then be the transferring judge that's why i say my position on it is a little awkward yeah. with it being a 15th district court case i would think that that judge who's judge whose case is so judge burke would then be the transferring judge and i think he has to sign off and then Judge Valvo as the chief also has to then sign up. And then, and finally, and this is for- Because we have to make this easier for people that need help. I'm right. sorry, this, that was- uh, well, <laughs> One other component of that, that, I'm, that as the court is laying that out, is occurring to me is that there is fines and costs associated, of course, with this, a portion of which goes to the 51st district court, but also a portion of which is due to the 15th district court. And every court has different- those Correct. So I think that would that uh, will need to be sorted out by defense counsel as far as contacting the 15th district court and figuring out how much money needs to go to them versus the 51st district. Correct. I mean, they, I think the there's an issue regarding the fines and costs, and then I think the probation oversight goes always to the transferring yes. or the transferred court. So. so procedurally how do we need to adjourn do we need to get this to a different to over the 15th how do we, how are we going to proceed judge okay typically what would happen if you guys have the deal worked out i need the plea form and then i would take the plea i would then set it for sentencing at 15th and that from that point that's where the transfer would then begin to happen you guys would work with 15th but I usually will take the plea. Okay. Um, so I could, I, I think the best way is you guys get the, since you have it worked out or near worked out is I will, is to adjourn it out, get the form to me. Next time you appear, I take the plea and get you sent to 15 so you can begin the process to move it. I think that's the simplest, straight, most straightforward way to do it. I would agree with that. Uh, yeah, Judge, and sorry for the last minute uh, switch to Zoom, but Ms. Patel was talking about appearing in a mask, and uh, and she sounded really ill this morning, and I did not feel comfortable bringing her into the court in that condition. No, I, I appreciate that, Counsel. Um, uh, I can do any. Any any of the next Thursdays you want to do, um, Your Honor, if I if we could have the afternoon next Thursday, I'm in. Um, in the morning, okay. I have to be in Oakland. Um. Okay. I I for you, I will give you the four. I'm just letting you know there are about 160 cases, so I'm not sure where the afternoon begins or ends. But we can always put you there. <laughs> so I can. Move the 11th Judge, however you do it if you would prefer going the 11th i also have to be in oakland that morning um as we'll long as you, we'll get you afternoon the afternoon and we'll get you in the afternoon whichever is more convenient for you judge i don't want to, if you've got 160 cases on the docket i don't want to add 161st 
<laughs> well, they just keep adding on. But um, here's what I'll do. Let me put it to the 11th so we make sure that we've got everything in order. And, All right. And Mr. Mikowski, I would recommend contacting the 15th, 15th District Court and getting in contact with a woman named Jennifer Johns. Um, that is in pro she's in probation. She, she, runs sobriety she runs a sobriety court program. Okay. And she probably would be a good point person as far as making sure that the paperwork is appropriate on the 15th district court end in order to transfer it to Waterford. Got it. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. So Shoulders. I'll do it. Uh, I'll then adjourn the probable cause to April 11th, 2024. I set it at nine, but we'll make sure you get into the afternoon. Thank you. Bond will continue on this matter. All right. And Mr. Patel, feel, feel better, please. Thank you. Thank you. And, ha and happy birthday, Judge. Happy happy birthday. Thank you, sir. Court calls the case, People versus Thomas Shinovar. Good afternoon, Your Honor. It's great to see you as always. Jim Amber on behalf of Mr. Shinovar. And also here is uh, Ms. Gurno Adams as well. All good right. Very good. Yeah. Good afternoon. All right. And what are we doing on these cases? Yeah, I believe that this matter was uh, was set for a competency hearing um, on both of these matters. I received during my docket yesterday um, a copy, the newest updated um, uh, competency finding, uh, expressing the opinion that the defendant is uh, incompetent and no longer restorable. Um, I don't have that report. Okay. I don't. Did you receive that, counsel? I did, Your Honor, uh, and that is, you know, for the first time now, we have a report where uh, the spining is being made that uh, Mr. Shinovar, he's not going to be able to be brought back. It's it's, uh, it's very unfortunate. I've known him since before this happened, so, but it's not surprising either, though. We've been coming back uh, for quite a while. Yes. And so, yes, we have. All right. So what would I'll get a copy of that. But what would you like at this point for me to do? Because I have this case and I also have the misdemeanor case that we were having come along with it. So in each of those matters, um, again, I got it yesterday at 2.16 p.m. I just sent a copy of it to Ms. Wielde. OK. I don't know how Mr. Amberg wants to proceed. Um, I'm prepared to enter a stipulation to that report. Again, we did both get it pretty late. Um, so if he wants some time to go over it, um, we can adjourn it. But my my expectation is either this week or in the near future, we're probably going to be stipulating to that report. I can have the orders found and then the court has the issue of whether it wants us to file a, um, a probate petition. And if I could address both of those issues, Your Honor, uh, I know I'm going to stipulate to the, the findings of the report that there's nothing in here um, that I don't agree with. As far as the probate is concerned, Ms. Gurno Adams is here. I, I, she could shed more light on that. My understanding is that there may already be, or actually there is already a probate matter that's open. Um, so I don't know if uh, Ms. Gurno Adams would want to shed some light on that or not, but that's my understanding. Yes, ma'am. Yes, there there is currently an order. the The date of the offense, Mr. Shinovar was hospitalized, and he's been under a court order for treatment since July of two thousand and twenty two. There is a one year order in existence now that expires in June, and I think the prosecution can work with. We can all work together to extend that order as needed, given the incompetent to stand trial development. Okay. So you guys tell me what you want me to do. <laughs> I was I was looking so, at Mr. Evans. I was just <laughs> resume. Um, I was looking at you, Jonathan. <laughs> so so quite frankly, Your Honor, um, the way that I read it, you know, he he's obviously going to be opined. I, I think that the theory here is we're going to opine him to be incompetent to stand trial on both both cases. My understanding is that he does have this open case. If the court asks me to file a petition 
you know, I, I've got the orders and I can print those out and give them to the why, why would I ask you to file a petition? He's already. I'm, 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 I'm getting to that point. He, okay. so he's on a probate order. That petition would essentially be subsumed under his current order. So, you know, it, it, they make a, they make a point. Well, I don't know it what point they were making, but it would seem to me that we could make this finding and then the people can decide whether they want to keep these cases alive or just get rid of them. Um, in, in, if the court makes the finding that he's incompetent and not restorable, we have to file a Noli Cross. The only question is, and it's the court in the checkbox, if you look at the MC-205, it will say the court orders the prosecutor to do it. I'm not, I'm not here to tell the court what to do. <laughs> but I also don't have to check that. You don't, you don't have to check that box. So I'm not, I'm, I'm right. telling I you. I read the report. Are the parties stipulating to the report? I just received it. I looked through it. I read it. I'd be prepared to stipulate to the report. Yes, Your Honor. Stipulated. All right. Then the court would make the finding that the defendant is, and currently is incompetent to stand trial, and that it is unlikely and that he is, un that he is not likely to be restored or he's not restorable. So I need an order to that effect. I've got both of those. Uh, I got to print them out, and, and or I can send them to Miss Wielding if she wants you to print send them. them right to her. She'll get it printed out, and then I can dismiss this matter. Right? Sounds you good. can dismiss this matter. Sounds great, Your Honor. And then I need that order, and then I think we're concluded. And you're not ordering me to file. I am not ordering you to file the petition, given the information that I've received. It, Perfect. It would be, it'd be a waste of resources and time to do that. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Excellent. Appreciate it very much, Your Honor. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you, Your Honor. Now I can go back All to my right. trial with John Shea, Robert Burton Harris, and Blake Hallam that I've been in for the last oh. month. <laughs> All right. All right. Take care, guys. guys. Yep. We'll see you. Bye. Andrew Children's appearing on behalf of Assistant so Public Defender Hannah Apple appearing on behalf of Mr. Webster. Mr. Webster, will you please state your name for the record? Well, your Honor, we are asking that this matter be set for a preliminary exam. Discovery complete? Yes, Your Honor. People have their witnesses available the 9th preliminary examination in person, April 9th, 2024, 9 a.m. That is before Judge Burke. Your Honor, may I address that? You may. Two things. One is the court in where we need to I am. Um, just for any, I, that's not my, my main point, although I do see that there's some positive THC tests. Um, my concern is I've been I've been informed by my victim advocates. The defendant's mother is the victim in the case. And she has been receiving ongoing harassing contact from the defendant on the phone, including telling her to F off, but not F the actual word. Um, my understanding is he's currently staying with his grandmother, who has expressed her own concern to his mother that they can't control him. And there's concerns over their safety, and the, the mom is expressing concerns over her own safety. And again, obviously, there is this violation of contact. Your Honor, this is the first um, that I'm hearing of any of these allegations of contact. Um, I would just advise my client again to not, he's denying contacting his mom in any way. Um, but that's as far as I can speak. Were there as as were these communications written, or I mean, were they text messages or calls? A verbal phone call, and, and for what it's worth, Your Honor, the um, our victim advocate did tell the victim obviously to contact the police with this information. According to her, she's left a message from who I believe is the officer in charge, but hasn't. There is not a report. I don't have a report to provide to the court or Miss Apple. Um, I'm, that, that's just the information I'm going on. These have been uh, phone calls. So who is he residing with? And my understanding is there are some concerns there also? The grandmother has, has expressed concern to her daughter, who is the victim, and the defendant's mother, over her ability to control the defendant and her concerns over her own safety. I believe, uh, as it was described, everyone is kind of walking on eggshells around them because they all have concerns for their safety. But... Um, there, there are issues with his behavior and, and this harassing conduct. Your Honor, this I is not good. I un, I understand the, the court's concern and and the prosecution's position at, at this time, um, but it sounds as though this is an ongoing 
investigation. I mean, I would ask that he be able to continue um, out on bond. He's here today. He's been in contact well, with his attorneys. No, I understand that. I, I get all of that. And I realize it may be a bit of a shock to you, but. Um, it's my understanding the, uh, the plan was for the defendant to reside with his dad in Jackson County, but they, and this is coming through phone conversations, the defendant and his father get into some sort of argument. Father takes the defendant and drops him off with his grandmother because he doesn't want him to stay there. And, and the grandmother is having similar issues, but there's no place for the defendant to go or go. Okay, so here's part of my problem. Hold on a second. Who is Destiny Webster? Is that your sister? That's a sister. Got it. And your honor, my client's informing me that his grandmother wishes him to stay with him. I have not, I had no reason to contact her to confirm that if the court wants to pass the matter. Well, Okay, so here's here's part of the problem. And and I would pass the matter and let you do what you need to do. But part of my problem is if indeed what is being indicated to the prosecutor's office is true, and now it's been said, and that first of all, he wasn't supposed to be residing there, but was supposed to be someplace else, but can't be that other place because of whatever, for whatever the reason is. And then is at grandma's house, but grandma expresses some concern. Then we've got a problem. Hold on. Um, I would agree with that. My only, of course, I haven't had communications of any of these parties. I know the prosecutor's office and their victim advocate have. My concern is that this is coming through the complaining witness in this case is mom. Like, it just seems like this is a lot of third party contact. I mean, if the well, we can make it all first party, Mr. Allen, um, take him, put him in the jury box all the way to the very back in that or someplace safe in the jury box. Um, you have phone numbers and other things or no? I do not, but I will, at least that's the grandma, in, I will try to get that's hold of endeavor grandma. to try to get to them. If there can be a call, I want to know what's exactly going on because if I'm not, and I'll just be blunt, I'm not sending him someplace where there's going to be problems. Understood. And, that, and now that this has been said, I don't want any retribution for something being said, which is now our, our other problem. Understood. Understood. I will try to get okay. in contact with you. Thank you. So I'll pass that. Or let's call the case. People versus Justin Parton. Your Honor, uh, I need to be fed. And good afternoon, Your Honor. Good to see you again today. I am on behalf of Mr. Parton in case number 1297. Okay. All right. What are we doing, folks? Uh, Your Honor, just uh, at the moment uh, to get everything together, in my opinion, there was a competency issue. He was opined to be competent. In, in, I have the report for 22 F1 1297. I don't know if the courts ever made that finding, though, that he time to be confident or whether we need to stipulate to that report or not. I believe that we stipulated to that at our last court date, but I we did. Okay. I signed off on the order. Perfect. All right. I have prepared a new one just in case. Um, that being the case, in case of doing that, I've had an opportunity. I think that both of these matters we're going to set for an exam. Is that right? I believe that's what Mr. Parton wants to do. That's what Mr. Parton wants to do? That's what you guys want to do? I mean, yes, sir. Okay. Our discovery is all complete. For you guys, yes, your honor. And would the people have their witnesses available on the night? I'm, I'm going to try. It's, it's an older case. Been kind of kicking yeah. around for a while. But, uh, we should be okay. Your honor, I hate to kick it around a little bit more, but I am going to be in trial on the ninth. I apologize. You jerks may not be doing anything. No. <laughs> um. <laughs> Your Honor, 
<laughs> did that say was... you liked me this morning when I saw you. I hope that's still true. What? You did say you liked me this morning when, when I saw I you. I said hope... no such thing. I'm sure you <laughs> I said you were a nice person. I didn't say I liked you. <laughs> I, heard you I heard that you said you liked me. I don't know. I didn't mean it. I must have been. <laughs> must have been the coffee. All right. So you're not available tonight, Mr. No, Your Honor, I apologize. Which the parties be available the 16th. So what I will do is I'll take preliminary examination, a set preliminary examination in person, April 16th, 2024, 9 a.m. That will be before Judge Falvo. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Court calls case, people versus Tyler Dulet. Attorney Morgan Barroso on behalf of the people. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Stephen Dodge on behalf of Mr. Jolette. Your Honor, uh, this is, oh, somebody like that. Your Honor, uh, this is a date and time set for a probable cause conference. My co my client is desirous of waiving his right to a prelim exam. Um, okay, what's, you saw the progress report? I did, Your Honor. And Let's uh, just address to, that before we do anything else. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, my client uh, acknowledges that and has acknowledged to community corrections that uh, that he did uh, relapse on, I believe, Friday or Saturday. Uh, since that time, Your Honor, he has uh, uh, gone to community corrections. He has filled out the requisite paperwork to be admitted to a, um, I think it's a, a twice a week program that was suggested by community corrections. He has an appointment at 930 on Monday morning for an assessment. Uh, and and so uh, those are the the actions. So, but he hasn't been admitted to the program yet. No, he, he has to still do the assessment. He just applied today and okay. was turned around. and turned in the paperwork, and he was given the time of nine thirty on Monday to to uh, to appear for his assessment. I believe, Judge. From then, Jones. from that assessment, did they say how much time he would have to before they would make a decision? I don't believe so, Judge. Did they? They did no. Just like nine thirty, meet with Mrs. Jones. I believe it is. All right, counsel approach. All right. Yeah, record should reflect we had a bench conference in this case. Rather than the waiver, I'm going to adjourn the probable cause conference out. Let's get you into the programming and everything, and then we can proceed with this. Um, good first steps. So I'm going to adjourn it out April 25th, 2024, 9 a.m. Thank you, John. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Court calls case, People versus Willie Morgan. And yes, good afternoon, Your Honor. May it please the court, Delphia Burton appearing on behalf of and with Willie Morgan by Zoom. Mr. Morgan, would you state your name for the record, please? Uh, Willie Morgan. And so you know, Ms. Burton, it does please the court. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. What are we doing on this? So, Your Honor, I did submit uh, some information to Ms. Barroso. However, she did not have an opportunity. I didn't submit it in time for her to reach out to the um, complainants with respect to the All offer. Right. So we need some additional time for that to take place. Probable cause conference. Will the 18th work for you? It works for me. Is that okay? Is that enough time, Ms. Barroso? Absolutely. Thank you. April 18th, 2024. 9 a.m. Right. as your invite indicates, bond will continue. Oh, Judge, and so can we appear by Zoom at, at that time as well? Wow, she's just pushing it. Just, I mean, just push it. We do one nice thing. And well, then Judge, I was told that she never asked you. Don't, and, and you know, you she never, that means she doesn't want to come back and see it. That's what it is. She just, <laughs> she doesn't. That's fine. I won't take it personally. Yes, you may appear via Zoom. <laughs> Thank you, Judge. Have a great day. <laughs> you too. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Court calls the case, People versus Nathan Turgeon. Good afternoon, Judge Greg Demopoulos on behalf of Mr. Turgeon. Thank you, sir. All right. And what are we doing on this? Mr. Turgeon, can you state your name, please? Nathan Turgeon. Thank you. All right. What are we doing on this case today? Your Honor, we would like to set this matter for a preliminary exam. All right. Do you have all the discovery? We do. All right. And would the people have their witnesses available the 9th? Judge, would that, exam? Be, yeah, would that be morning or afternoon on the 9th? I set them in the morning, and they're usually running in the morning. Is that a problem for you? Because I can... It is. I, uh, I'm i down in Wayne Circuit in the morning and 35th District what about, Court all over. What about the 16th? Does that look any better for you? Um, 
It can because I can get some coverage on the 16th. All right. Without objection, I'll set preliminary examination then April 16th, 2024. <laughs> I don't know why. 9 a.m. before judge, before judge fresh hour. That's at this location, but before judge fresh hour. All right. Bond will continue. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. Court calls the case, people versus Dewan Mann. And good afternoon, Your Honor. Nicole James on behalf of Mr. Mann. And it's Mr. Mann. He's Mr. Mann not is here. not he is not present, Judge. If you recall, you gave him until uh the following day when we were here last week, uh at 9 a.m. to post his bond or turn himself in. It's my understanding that neither were done. Wow. Your Honor, it's also my understanding that we have a violation report from Community Corrections indicating that there was a tamper with the tether on March 22nd at 7.54 a.m. I do see that. I already had a warrant out. Was it no bond? Yes. He yes. already has a warrant. No bond. So we'll just continue that. No bond warrant. We'll get him. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Your Honor. Happy birthday. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> right. She said never. Have a good one, everywhere. Court calls the case People versus Romeo Serba. Bridget Cruz on behalf of Mr. Serba. State your name for the record. Romeo Serba. All right. Your Honor, we'd be asking for adjournment for additional discovery. We're just waiting on some video. Probable cause conference, April 18, 2024, 9 a.m. Bond continues. Thank you. Court calls case people versus Nicole Gold. Um, I did get a call from her husband last night that she is inside Saginaw Odyssey House. Uh, it's a treatment program. Um, we would be asking for an adjournment. I did reach out to Saginaw uh, Odyssey House, confirm that she was there. I asked for a letter, which they told me at the time that they were unable to send uh, because their printer wasn't working. Um, so we'd just be asking for a short adjournment. Um, all right. I'll, I'll grant you the adjournment. I, April 11th, 2024, 9 a.m. Bound continued. Thank you. Okay, so well, we'll set up for the next block. I'll be back in five minutes and we'll get rolling on it. Court standing recess. All rise. Court calls case people versus Alexander Foster. Your Honor, Joe Simon on behalf of Mr. Foster, who appears by Zoom from the great state of Maryland. Is that where he is? Yep. What part? Uh, Montgomery County. Say again? Montgomery County, Your Honor. You're in Montgomery County. All right. Yes. Well, tell him I said hello and that this that's my adopted state. I adopted them. They did adopt me. And that um, our blessings are going out to all the people there regarding the Key Bridge. Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. Go ahead. Thank you. That was something else. Um, Your Honor, Mr. Childers and I are negotiating. We've actually achieved the negotiation in principle, but it's going to require some prepaid restitution. That amount is being real close to being determined. We're asking to adjourn the PCC one last time. And you tell me how long. Court determines how long. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> Would the 18th work for you? That's fine. All right. Thank you, Honor. Probable cause conference will be adjourned April 18th, 2024. 9 a.m. Bond will continue. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Go Terps. Yeah, go Terps. <laughs> Your Honor, can I approach real briefly on another matter? Yes, you may. Court calls case of the people versus Carrie Wynn. Kenneth Overwater, Assistant Public Defender, on behalf of Mr. Wynn. So, Judge, we're actually kind of in the same position we were two weeks ago. Um, we're waiting for new charges. However, Mr. Emmons is on the case now, so I'm quite sure that those new files will be reviewed. Um, and charging decisions made 
very quickly. So I'd ask for a two week adjournment. If those charges are filed, it's the defense's intent to apply Mr. Wynn for felony drug court on all matters. <laughs> April 18, 2024, 9 a.m. Bond continue. Thank you, Honor. All right, I got one more inmate. Wait on that one. I'm going to take a brief recess. We've got another. This is Spanish. And I got another one that we're waiting on. All right, court's going to stand in recess. All right. We're not.